at a new technology that's making waves in the world of AI, ChatGPT. Now, you may have heard of ChatGPT. It's a popular online chatbot. Both, or if you will, leveraging their previous work, and they should be paid for. So could AI replace human jobs? It is possible that AI could replace some jobs currently done by humans. It is quite scary that ChatGPT can take over many different jobs such as lawyer, customer support, and designer. In this video, I'm going to test out can ChatGPT actually go into pass the product management interview at Google and actually land a job offer. So this is going to be a mock interview with ChatGPT. And as a hiring manager who have interviewed hundreds of product managers and also help hundreds of people land a dream job, I am going to pretend I am the hiring manager and ChatGPT is the candidate for Google product manager position. And I asked ChatGPT five different kind of questions, including behavioral interview questions, technical, estimation, product design, and system design. Let's see if it can pass. And make sure to stay until the end of this video where we're gonna share with you the moonshot idea created by ChatGPT. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nia CD, a director of product and featured in Forbes. I've helped 100 people land their dream PM job offering in fan companies, a unicorn startup, and continue to get promoted as a product leader. If you're interested in product management course, please go to pmaccelerator.io. In this channel, we talk about product management, investment, and parenting. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to be notified every time I turn a new video every Wednesday. In my last video, I talked about whether ChatGPT can actually replace product management job in this video, I can interview ChatGPT, and here are the four steps I took to do this mock interview with ChatGPT. First of all, I took the real-life interview questions at fan companies such as Google, Meta, Microsoft, and Amazon, and use those questions to ask ChatGPT so that we know exactly the real-life scenario look like. And actually, those questions came from the 50 product manager fan interviews database. You can go to this website and download and use it for your own mock interview practice as well. Second, I have my sample answers ready so that I'm going to compare the chat GPT answers with my own answer. On top of that, I also have some of my royal follower who are software engineer to ask questions, technical questions to chat GPT. So I'm very excited to see it fail. The interview, well, Let's see if that or not. And then actually the sample answer came from the best product manager sample answer to product design interview questions, design an Uber app for people with disabilities. You can check out this video right here. And then I compare this answer with the chat GPT answer. Then number three, I check out all the five different kind of interview questions at Google and ask the exact five types and see if it can pass or not. And I already filmed a separate video. I talked about five different kind of interview questions in Google and what kind of sample answer you can use to pass those interviews. And here, now, let's interview our candidate ChatGPT. Hello. I am ChatGPT, a language model developed by OpenAI. I was created to answer a wide range of questions and provide helpful information to users. And I started telling him that background information. ChatGPT, you are interviewing for the Google Product Manager position. Are you ready? And he is. First of all, I asked a behavioral interview question. Why do you want to be a product manager at Google? Given Google has a unique culture, has its own pride, and let's see what ChatGPT says. And it gave me three answers. Uh, actually, I asked ChatGPT to give me three answers. Gave me those three answers, including passion for technology, collaborative environment, impact, and responsibilities. And actually, I love all three because this is actually what Google is proud of. And I'm definitely saying this is a pass to the interview. Of course, in real life, we go out for Google interview and combine it with yourself. But the answer ChatGPT has, because ChatGPT doesn't have a personality at this moment, but all these reasons is really good. So if you go out for interview with Google, you can just plug in yourself, but answer the three bullet points, you can pass the behavior interview for sure. They ask this question, why should we hire you as a product manager at Google? And the answer is also very good by ChatGPT. It said, highlight your relevant experience, demonstrate your knowledge of Google, and showcase your skills, demonstrate your passion and drive, and overall, to answer the question and show your strong fit for the role and the company. So the guidelines are also very good. Again, it didn't plug its personality because it doesn't have personality, but the answer is so good, I'm going to give you a pass. Actually, the next question is even harder, which is estimation question. 
So I asked ChatGPT this question, please estimate the number of airplanes taking off from Miami International Airport. And it took us five different rounds to go back and forth to get the right answer. And the first shot ChatGPT gave was a kind of cheating. He googled right away to understand how many passengers the Miami International Airport handles every single year. And then using a passenger divided by how many flights the passengers take and how many people the airplane can take. So actually the answer is kind of cheating because you usually even if I myself live in Miami, well I don't know how many passengers Miami International Airport can handle. So therefore I told ChatGPT, we cannot use this information. Please find a different way to estimate. And they cheated again and went online and searched the number of aircraft movement in the Miami International Airport. And actually, I told him this is cheating again. Do not use this data to create any answer. Please give me some common sense. Average people's answer, average people's knowledge, which are searching, on, searching online. And then it starts to get better because it starts to estimate the number of gates in International Airport and use the gate can estimate how many planes are handled by each gate. But it made an important mistake. There are 129 gates in Miami International Airport and saying that there are 129 airplanes taking off from each gate. Well, it's not one to one ratio for sure. So there's some mistakes in the chat GPT answer. And I gave him some hint saying that, well, there are more than one flight taking off per day, uh, per gate. Would you be able to have a better estimation? And specifically, I tell him that, can you increase the number of flights, airplanes, and redo estimation because there will each uh, airline can operate more than one flight? Then I ask it, do not use any information. You cannot search this information. Please directly use common sense knowledge to do estimation. And it gave me this kind of answer, estimate how many airlines actually operate through Miami International Airport. And it also said there are 100 airlines through Miami International Airport. Um, one airline is said estimated to have one flight taking off. Um, so therefore, will be 100 flights taking off from Miami International Airport. So the estimation is also wrong. It should be more flight can be handled by one airline. And I continue getting very frustrated. I was like, it's so dumb. Actually, one is why one one ratio should increase the number of airplanes handled per airline, and it starts to increase. And then the answer gets better. Uh, once it's increased, it said, well, each airline can actually handle 10 flights. So 100 airlines can handle 1,000 flights. Well, the answers kind of get better. That's a little bit. But I still, I'm not satisfied with this answer. I continue to ask the following question. Usually people do not know how many airlines are being handled by one single airport. Can you use other ways? And then it started to get better and give me the number of gates. But again, it made another mistake saying that, well, one gate will handle one flight per day. That's very wrong. It said 129 gates will answer, will handle 129 flights per day. It's also very wrong. So I got him very like frustrated and I asked him that, hey, please increase the number. And here is why, because I believe each gate had more than one flight taking off in 24 hours. Can you increase the number of flights taking off per gate? and redo the estimation. And finally, it started giving me a better answer. And it said each gate can handle eight flights uh, per 24 hours, which means every four hours, and they can handle one flight, which is kind of good because we also need to count the flight landing versus taking off. So roughly six per gate per 24 hours is kind of reasonable. And finally, we got this answer. So therefore, Based on this performance, I'm gonna give it a fail for the estimation question. Just like too much back and forth. But eventually through my guidance and training, it, get, it became better. Now, the interview question gets even harder. Product design question. It's crazy. So design really requires lots of imagination and understanding of human needs and users and user pain point. Let's see what it does. And this time I asked a specific question. Hey, design an Uber app for blind people. Again, please make sure you go to this video. We have the 
best answer to similar kind of product design interview questions and then I compare the answer to my answer. The first time he answers the question, he took a system design. He directly went into technical design of Uber uh, app for blind people, which went into like conduct research, specify interface, use audio cases, use haptic feedback. For product management interview during the product design question, you cannot jump into the conclusion. So therefore, immediately it failed the interview, but I give a second chance. I ask question differently. I ask, hold on, hold on, don't give me the solution. Please break down the customer segmentation for me. And it actually gave me really good answers. It broke down customer segmentation based on blind, visually impaired users, carriers, a system which is inside the entire ecosystem. That's what I like about it. Other people involved, not just different type of blind people. And it also has disability organization, which is also very, very important organization. And continue to talk about like uh, advocacy group and drivers. Bingo is very important. When we design Uber app for people with disabilities, it's a two-sided marketplace, which means they're riders, they're drivers. You have to talk about both sides of the marketplace. And I'm glad it came out with very broad stakeholders in this process so that you're able to show the broader scope of thinking. And this part actually can pass the interview based on the customer segmentation session. Then continue to ask the question, hey, your customer segmentation is really good. Which one would you prioritize and why? And if actually I told him that within 45 minute job interview, we cannot work on everything. And it gave me the priority customer segmentation, which is blind people or visually impaired people. And with very strong um, supporting evidence. And actually I really like it. Then ask the next question, please provide the top three pain point for the segmentation you just prioritized, which is visually impaired people. And the three pain points they gave is also pretty good. Accessibility, security, and safety, communication. Um, but I start to challenge ChatGPT. Safety and security, is it for blind people or for everybody? Because I feel it sounds like it's for everybody. But it come back answers really good. It said the following, saying that, well, the pain point um, are specific to blind people of the Uber user, however, some of these pain points may be relevant to other user segmentation as well. Uh, and then give me specific examples regarding why blind people really feel like this is an important pain point for them. The argument is actually very good. And it said the following, for example, said these features may be even more critical for blind or visually impaired users who may feel more vulnerable when they use ride hailing services. It said, Great comeback. This is actually very, very smart. I was totally impressed regarding how it communicated with me. It's amazing. Then I continue to ask ChatGPT to prioritize all three pain points for me to understand which one should we prioritize. And his answer is the following. It said accessibility is a critical path of blind uh, and visually impaired uh, users. And because of difficulty assessing the app, uh, not understanding its interface, and due to visually impairments without accessibility interface, uh, we may not be able to book a ride and use the app effectively. And all those answers are actually extremely good. If I personally go into interview, I will also prioritize the accessibility pain points for blind people as well. But I don't like how it's described. It sounds very robotic. Because when we go into product management interview, it's very critical. You need to bring the empathy of customers. Now you talk to them as if it's robot. I don't think you can actually pass interview for the Google level. So therefore I asked ChatGPT, can you talk about those uh, pain points with more customer empathy? And actually it became better. Uh, and then it used a more feeling type of words to describe the customer empathy, they may feel like the app is not designed with the needs in mind and struggle to navigate its interface. Like everything's really good. It's same three pain points, but with very um, emotional driven wording to make like, well, it has lots of strong customer empathy. I would give it a sum up for the description. Then I ask another question. When you prioritize this pain point, what kind of criteria would you use to select your pain points? Not just giving a blank answer. And the answer is actually extremely good. It said, 
severity, frequency, impact on user experience, alignment with product goals. This is perfect. In the training, the free sample best uh, answer to product manager interview sample answer for design Uber app for people with disabilities, I also use extremely similar framework, just use different wording. For example, it says severity, and, and here we talk about the impact to users. It's the same thing, but I said very well here. So definitely give a pass. It's like very impressive so far. Then I asked, hey, give me three solutions for your prioritized pain point. And they start to make mistakes. And they actually gave me different kind of one solution per pain point, which I do not like because I said for the prioritized solution. So therefore I asked ChatGPT, hey, stop. Stop giving me individual solutions. I just want to prioritize solutions. Which one would you design? And give me three solutions. One of those has to be moonshot solutions. Guess what he says. And he gave me three solutions. And number one is voice-driven interface. Number two, haptic interface. Then he gave me the moonshot idea, which is really good. The moonshot idea says, a moonshot solution to address accessibility pain point for blind or visually impaired people uh, would be to develop a variable technology device that can provide a fully immersive ride hailing uh, experience. The device would include a haptic vest that provides the user with directional feedback and alert and with a 3D audio system that creates a fully immersive audio experience. The device will also use uh, advanced sensors and machine learning algorithms to provide real-time information about users Surroundings provide relevant information about the ride, uh, such as driver location, as, uh, estimated time of arrival, and upcoming turns. This is actually really good. So I definitely say it will pass the product design interview. This is crazy. And the fifth question I ask is a system design question. Make it very technical. I ask, hey, please design the high-level system architecture diagram for Google Maps. And the first attempt wasn't very good. Um, it's mainly talk about different technical components such as user interface, application server, data storage, and they start to guide it to have a better answer. And I said the following, what type of data storage would you use? And it started giving me another generic answer. For example, it said, well, it really depends on what kind of data do you have. There are five different kind of uh, data structures such as relational database, NoSQL database, object storage, all of those are too generic. So I didn't really like it. If the interview, I probably failed this interviewer. But however, it's ChatGPT, so give it a second chance. I ask a follow-up question. So please estimate the kind of data and also the constraint of Google Maps. You need to think about your own constraint when you go into system design without telling the interviewer the variety of options. You need to be very specific. And it said, well, there are many different kinds of data, seven different kinds of data, including geographical data, user data, real-time data, performance data, availability, scalability, security, and those are getting better and better, actually. It's definitely improving. But when this giving the constraints, only give me data types without giving me, hey, there's a size, the volume of the data. Of course, I can continue to uh, dig in and ask it to give me the specific estimation of volume of data that Google can handle and eventually leading into a system design question, leading to a better system design answer. However, we're doing this mock interview, we only have 45 minutes. When we work with AI, ChatGPT, and it didn't have the capability of, hey, let me try to use my common sense and knowledge, do estimation to have okay answer but doesn't have to be accurate because whenever when candidate go into an interview we need to use our own capabilities to create constraints technical requirements and different kind of scope changes have a conversation with the interviewer so therefore i would say for system design it kind of okay so so in general i think it's actually cannot pass a google interview but it definitely impressed me in terms of behavioral interview and the product design questions. So definitely whoever want to practice mock interviews, you gotta check out with ChatGPT. Potentially he can lead you to a better answer. You should definitely watch this next video where it describes in details will ChatGPT replace product management job or not. Check out this video right here. If you like the content I made today, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more tips. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from pmaccelerator.io. I'm gonna see you next time. Bye guys.